Hi everyone. Welcome to the Fixed Focus Program. I am Ebrahim Hashemi. This is an intermediate program of Fixed Focus Program. Unfortunately, I promised you in the previous episode to talk about the Fixed Focus Concentrator, but due to a series of problems, I could not prepare it. And I will definitely present it in the next program. But in this program, I want to introduce an interesting battery. So let's introduce the battery. Our lives now depend on batteries. There are different types of batteries. From cheap AA unchargeable batteries, up to nickel cadmium rechargeable battery, and lead batteries and new lithium ion batteries. All of these batteries must have two main characteristics. One voltage, two current. Now, I want to test these two AAA batteries. One is non-rechargeable and the other is rechargeable. Now I am measuring the voltage of the non-rechargeable battery. Yes, the voltage is about 1.552 volts. I short circuit this battery. Then, we measure the current. You can see that the current decreases from 2.60 ampere to 2.20 and so on. Well, let's go to the nickel cadmium rechargeable battery. Because this battery has more ampere. I use a thick cable and another ammeter. This ammeter has a range of 50 ampere. This battery is fully charged and its voltage is 1.2 volts. I will short circuit it now. We see that the output came up to 20 ampere and dropped rapidly. We all know that batteries should not be short-circuited, and shorting circuit the battery causes a fire and battery failure. For long time, I have been working on a model of battery. This battery I made does not need to be charged. And I do not think you have ever seen such a battery. This is the battery I made. This is a single cell battery. Do not be surprised by its large volume. This volume is due to the equipment that is inside the battery. And this volume will be reduced by using technology. The battery has an electrolyte input and an electrolyte output. This means that the above battery works with electrolyte. The electrolyte enters and exists here. The volume inside the battery is 1350 cubic centimeters. Well, let's go for a test. First, we connect the inlet and outlet pipes. I created an aquarium to determine the amount of electrolyte. I chose a small 3 watt electric pump. I give the pump output to the battery input. And I put the pump inlet into the tank. Well, the pump is ready and I connect it to this battery. Because the pump consumption is low, this battery can keep it on for hours. Well, the electrolyte I prepared earlier is poured into the tank, it is about 4 liters. Above electrolyte concentration is 30%. Four liters. 
همین چهار لیتره خب اگر دقت کنید من یه دونه از اینا رو به I connected the positive pole before. I also connect the negative pole. We have short circuited the battery output via an ammeter. Now everything is ready if the pump is turned on. The electrolyte moves in this direction. We have no output current now. Now I turn on the pump motor. If you pay attention, you can see that the air is coming out of the outlet pipe. And the ammeter hand is coming up. Now the battery is full. And the current is close to 38 amperes. The electrolyte battery comes out of the outlet pipe. Now I am measuring the battery voltage. The battery voltage is 2.22 volts. The output voltage varies between 2.10 and 2.70. And this depends on the type of chemical reaction that is inside the battery. In per liter of electrolyte this battery can work for 1.5 hours without reducing the current. So above battery with 4 liters of electrolyte can have a good output for up to 6 hours. Well, I reconnect the ammeter. You can see that the battery output in short circuit mode is approximately 42 amperes. Unlike most batteries, this battery has no problem with short circuit. Short circuit mode can be for hours. Now release the battery in the same short circuit mode. And in another hour, we will check the battery. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes now. And the battery current is approximately 41 amperes. The thing I have to say about this battery is that electrolyte must be injected into the battery from the outside for two reasons. The first is whether or not to get current from the battery. The electrode inside the battery will be consumed. Therefore, electrolyte injection should be controlled. And by removing the electrolyte, if you do not need a battery, the life of the electrode will be increased. Second, the reaction inside the battery is extremely exothermic. For this reason, the electrolyte must be cooled outside the battery. If the above battery is dry, it can be stored for decades, because it has nothing to spoil. As I said, this battery is a single cell battery. And with its electrode, it can work for 100 hours. And then it is ready to work again by changing the electrode. The amount of gas emitted from the battery is low. 
and this gas does not harm the environment. The range of battery operating temperature is between minus 15 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. This battery with this electrolyte is equivalent to a lightning generator. The difference is that the battery consumes electrolytes and generators, gasoline. Another thing I have to say about the battery is that replacement of battery electrode cartridge is done very quickly. Now I measure the temperature of the electrolyte. And I do this with an alcohol thermometer. The electrolyte temperature is 22 degrees and this is excellent. Now, I want to connect it with a few wire ropes. You can see how fast the wires burn. This shows the battery power. You saw the battery test. The important thing I have to say is that I made this battery with the equipment I had. And its output is only 25% of battery power. And if the equipment is suitable, we can increase its output power up to percent 80. And also, we can reduce its volume. I have to say about the price of the battery, which is much cheaper than lead batteries. Battery life is very long. It only needs to replace the electrode cartridge. Another thing I have to say about this battery is that the chemical reaction inside the battery is an exothermic reaction and the heat of the electrolyte cannot go above a certain level. And in this case, the rising heat is uncontrollable. However, increasing the heat causes to increase the output current. Of course, it may be possible to control the heat with a proper cooler. Well, I hope you like the battery. Write me any comments you have about the battery. Please do not ask any question about the internal equipment of the battery. Finally, if the company or factories that are able to research and develop the above battery and are interested in the above battery, I am willing to cooperate with them under certain conditions. And please send their message only by email. E E B B I I one three four three at gmail dot com. Good luck and goodbye.